We now know that police fired off thousands of rounds of tear gas, flashbangs and rubber bullets on the crowds after George Floyd was killed. It's the first look at the scale of force used on protesters and rioters, something police say was absolutely necessary. And while these rounds are commonly considered less lethal force, they still cause broken bones, fractured skulls, even permanent blindness. More than 12 months and a dozen lawsuits later, police will not say who pulled the trigger in the majority of those cases. Investigative reporter Ryan Race tells us why it's leading to questions about accountability when it comes to use of force. Ryan. Yeah, Lindsay, more than 4,000 rounds, hundreds of rounds every single day were fired during the unrest last summer. We learned this after requesting use of force records from every department that responded. But the number of shots is likely even bigger because some agencies said it was too chaotic and overwhelming and impossible to track. The woman you're about to meet says it's impossible to forget in a warning you may find parts of her story difficult to watch before the looting the fires the curfews Anna Maria Gelhay decided to join this familiar chorus it was early in the unrest only two days after the death of George Floyd she and hundreds of others protested across the street from MPD's third police precinct one day before rioters burned it to the ground. For the most part, it was incredibly peaceful. People were standing, some had signs. There was a lot of chanting going on. Watch as Galhay's video captured tear gas being shot into the crowd. She tried to alleviate burning eyes with first aid supplies and milk. But not even 10 seconds later, before the crowd could even clear out, Galhay was hit directly in the eye. Instantly got hit with the 40 millimeter round and dropped down to the ground. I'm an so no curfew no dispersal order, any warning at all? No. She streamed live on Facebook the entire time. My face was completely covered in blood. I'm clutching my eye, screaming for help. Um, just completely shocked. I was certain I had lost my eye. Hours later in the emergency room, doctors confirmed her fears. So you can see I have a scar right up here mm -hmm. and I received seven stitches for that. She will never again see normally. My pupil is there's actually two parts of it. Her view of law enforcement there's has forever changed too. Civilians just really wanted to be heard is what it was and um, we were attacked for it. Galhay sued MPD earlier this summer over what happened on this street corner. It's the most recent of the 12 lawsuits now pending against the department or the state patrol over their use of less lethal force. That force ranges from tear gas to rubber bullets that cause gruesome and lifelong injuries. One lawsuit says the officers not only, quote, abandoned their duty to the Constitution, they also abandoned their humanity. But in most of the cases, we still don't know who actually pulled the trigger. Out of the dozens of officers accused of using or approving excessive force, only three officers have been named. Can you hold officers accountable if they're not identified? It is very difficult to hold them accountable. Teresa Nelson is the legal director for the Minnesota chapter of the ACLU. The organization is among those suing Minneapolis for its use of less lethal force. I do want to acknowledge this was a chaotic situation. There were people who were bent on massive destruction. There were fires. There was looting. Those are all things that the police reasonably need to address. At the same time, what we saw is much more violence aimed at um, people who were not engaged in those things. From what you have seen, was this a reasonable use of force? 
I don't believe so, no. In court filings, the city is pushing back against the growing number of allegations. City attorney Jim Router described a scene that was too chaotic to track who fired what and at whom, given, quote, the situation that was facing officers at the time. This is the Minnesota State Patrol. The State Patrol offered a similar defense, telling five investigates in a statement that the riots were, quote, of such magnitude that keeping track was impossible during the response to restore order. It's hard to hold people accountable if you don't even know who the officers are. And that's why we have courts. Sid Heal is a retired commander with the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department and an expert on less lethal force. He says such force is absolutely necessary during widespread riots like the ones he experienced in L.A. after the Rodney King video and the ones we saw here after the George Floyd video. Now today we're being chastised for using the same devices that we've been using for 25 years. And my immediate response to that says, get us another anything. We'll, we'll use it tomorrow. We also asked Heal about the number of rubber bullets fired in the Twin Cities, at least 4,000 in a matter of days. Is that a lot? Yeah, that's a lot. And those rounds can cause a lot of damage. These injuries are unacceptable. Back in May, five investigates reported on what doctors called a disturbing trend of head injuries after they analyzed hospital records oh. during the protests. Headshots are forbidden. But the United Nations just last year warned that headshots are more likely to happen if officers are firing, quote, from the air or an elevated position, like the top of a police precinct. It had been apparent that it was the officers on the roof that had been shooting any of the projectiles that came out that evening. Um, so that's where I know it came from. I need to pressure. What Galhay still doesn't know is who pulled the trigger. Do you regret going? I don't regret going. I went there with the specific purpose in mind, and that was to render aid to other civilians that were, you know, feeling the effects of, of tear gas primarily. Um, the fact that I sustained this injury is n not a result of my own actions. The physical scars are obvious. Galhay will never see normally again, but you can't look past the emotional trauma either. She tells me fireworks this 4th of July brought back some of the worst memories of her life. In a statement, the Minneapolis City Attorney's Office says it cannot comment on active litigation or any ongoing investigations conducted by internal affairs. A spokesperson says the city does investigate allegations of improper use of force that arise from lawsuits or complaints of officer conduct. And Lindsay, we checked with the departments involved and asked them if anyone has been disciplined for their use of force. The State Patrol has yet to respond, but every other department said no. And like you said in your story, it's hard to know exactly where the shots came from. Ryan Race reporting, I know you'll be following these lawsuits. We will. All right, thank you so much.